This ball is crushed. Man, what a shot. He actually said, um, dude, you're a trivia question. I was like, <laughs> I am, aren't I? You know, because everybody's going to remember the pitcher. Everybody's going to remember the umpire, but... Who's the, like, who's the who's, who's the guy the, that broke it up? Yeah, who's the schmo that hit the 18 <laughs> hopper to the first baseman and legged it out? Uh, but I remember um, I lined out. So it might have been what would that be like the sixth inning or something like that? Seventh? Six. Six. I lined out to the right fielder, like smoked it. I'm like, gosh dang it! All right? Dude, when I barrel a ball, I need those hits. Like, come on, man! It's hard enough <laughs> to barrel stuff here, and so. Um, the game's going on, and everybody knows there's just a few. And it was like a like a Monday night. So there's 20, 25, 20,000 people there. And it wasn't, you know, a Saturday night to where it's a packed house. Um, everybody knows what's going on. The whole stadium knows what's going on. Their ball club knows what's going on. The umpires, they know what's going on. We know what's going on in our dugout. And it's like it's somebody's going to break it up. He's going to plunk a guy. Somebody's going to boot a ball. Somebody, nobody goes perfect. What's well, been 20 some odd times? I remember Mark Grizzolanek in the seventh. And this is when uh, it was like 415 to center field. It is 415 to center field. I think they moved in the left field uh, fence a little bit, but I mean, it's big in their outfield. And Austin Jackson um, really was a tremendous center fielder. He could cover ground like nobody's business. And Grud smoked the ball. I mean, on a line, ball's carrying. It's like, dude, just barreled it. I mean, you couldn't click it any better. And Austin Jackson is full dead sprint, and he's kind of going towards, like, the, the kind of cornered in left center. The, the center field wall was, like, straight across, and then it just kind of angled, and then the left field wall ran. Full sprint, full layout, like, backhand, um, like, full extension dive, caught it, and, like, slid kind of, like, into the warning track area. And the place just lost him right. Because he... Ball off the bat, everybody's like, oh. It's over. The, whole, the whole stadium's like, oh, man, it's over. And they made that catch, and the place went nuts. You know, like the 20, 25,000 people sounded like 100,000. And I remember I was standing there in the dugout, and that was the third out of the end. I did the math, and I was like, it's going to come down to me. Like, I guarantee you we're not going to get a hit in the eighth. That, when that shows up, so sure enough, we come up and hit in the eighth, nothing. I mean, I remember as I was coming in from defense, People like stand above the dugout. They're like, Donald, it's going to come down to you. You suck. You got no chance. Like, we're going to have a perfect game. You're not going to break it up. You suck. And I remember just like, the whole time I kept thinking, I'm going to break this thing up. Like, everybody thinks that kind of stuff. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, oh, yeah I'll show you. I wasn't thinking that, but it was like, dude, I'm going to break this thing up. Somehow, some way, like, I'm going to fight like a dog to try to break this thing. I want to ruin this guy's night. I want to ruin all these people's yeah. night. Like, Stay up late. Yeah. I, I want to ruin their the rest of their work week. Basically, you know, there's no pressure on me. I mean, it's all right. Umpires you got one job to do. Yeah, the the guys on defense, like they got to make a play, right. you know. Um, and so uh, he's got to throw strikes. But also, and just over the years, you watch when guys have no hitters or perfect game going. Umpires are going to be more liberal as they should be with strike zone, out calls, all that kind of stuff. Like if it's in doubt or you know if there's any kind of gray area, it's going to go towards the pitcher. And I remember that just, like, that was somewhat in the back of my mind. But it was, like, fully apparent. Like, the first pitch I took, he threw me, like, a cutter that was two feet off the plate away. Strike. I went, oh. Like, I'm like, I'm not. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not. And I get it, understandably so. But I'm like, I'm going down punching out. Like, I don't want to be the guy where the catcher comes running past me. And I'm dragging my bat off the field into the dugout as they're all you know, dog piling. So um, I was like, dude, I just, it's almost like a hit and run. Like I've got to put the ball in play. I'm going to be aggressive with it. I'm not just going to just passively try to do it, even though it looked like it, you know, it was an 18 hopper to Miguel Cabrera. Second pitch, uh, he went a little farther off the plate. Ball. So it was like, first one was two feet off the plate. This one was like three and a half feet off the plate. And it was like, ball. <laughs> It's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> like, thank you. Like, it, this, this would kind of, I'd have no shot here. So he threw me another cutter, <clears throat> similar to the first one. And when I put that ball in play, I saw um, Miguel Cabrera literally, like, range, like, 12 feet to his right. That's, that's the second baseman's ball. To where if he just goes back to the bag, you know? Right. But in the midst of it, you want to be, dude, you want to go make the play. Like, that's what he's trying to do, so I respect it. 
uh, just created more of a challenge. And as you see, you watch baseball games, when pitchers go and cover, the angle they take, work up the line, catch the ball. If the base runner gets even, at some point in that foot race to the bag, if the runner gets even or a step ahead, typically he's going to be safe. Right? I mean, it's just kind of how the rhythm of the, the play works. Because they have to throttle down, slow down, right. catch the ball, tag, you know, tag the bag, step on the bag. When I put that ball in play, like, literally, like, I started running hard, but my eyes went to, like, Galarraga. And as he's working up the line, my whole thought, I didn't even really watch the play, like, I just knew the first baseman got it, that's it. But my whole thought was, I need to get ahead of him. Not like, I'm not trying to beat the ball out. I'm, I need to get a step ahead of him. Like, that's what I was like. I felt like I was racing him in a way. Get a step ahead of him, and I'm, I'm going to be safe. <laughs> Obviously, well, I was called safe, but it, that didn't happen. When you watch it in slow-mo, it's obvious and apparent. In real time, I mean, it's boom, boom. And when he uh, got to the bag before me, about a step and a half, and it's right, I mean, he catches it, and I hit the bag. I remember thinking that, like, as I'm running through, I'd, like, get another step past the bag, and Jim Joyce is right in front of me. Typically, with plays like that, the guy's got to be four steps past the bag for them to call him safe, right? right? Any gray area, it's going to go to him. When his arms went safe, <laughs> I was the most shocked person in the stadium, just waiting for him to go, you know, punch me out. And when he did that, I was not expecting it. And then all hell broke loose. Their dugout, Jim Leland came and was like screaming at the top of his lungs. And I didn't even know like how I walked back to first base. I didn't even know like just it was like, dude, there's a lot going on here. The noise in the stadium. I've never been a part of a mob. I've never been around like a mob, you know, like a mob mentality where there's just like a, a growing anger. <laughs> the, the noise of the, the booze. I don't even know how it could have been 10 minutes. It could have been one minute of the time between the next pitch. It just, everything just kind of like stood still. And I remember I was standing on first and just the commotion was still going on and Miguel Cabrera was in his face screaming. All these guys were yelling and to Jim Joyce's credit, he just stayed it. Yeah, he stayed the course and I was standing on first kind of like watching and I remember, you know, they were kind of off to my right and Sandy Alomar Jr., first base coach. And I kind of like look up at him out of the corner of my left eye and goes, you were out, bro. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, I said, I know. I said, I, I know, Sandy. I know, man. I know I was out. He's like, are you kidding me right now? I said, no. He goes, dude, this is crazy. Did you get a lot of, uh, get a lot of uh, heat after? I mean, any? So, yes and no. Uh, and you just did your job. Yeah, your job is to put the yeah, ball in play and, yeah, and run hard. Yeah. And- so I come into the dugout and in, at uh Comerica, if it's still called that, you take steps, a flight of steps, up to the clubhouse. Before I got to the steps, like as I, you know, get my bats, I get my helmet and glove, I go walking um, kind of back through to into the room that takes you up. And uh, Austin Kearns and Grizzlonic and Jake Westbrook were standing there. Jake Westbrook pitched a long, long time in the big leagues. They said, hey, um, <laughs> so here's what you're going to do. You're just gonna play stupid, Jim. Like Jim's a respected guy here, and not not a lot of umpires have. Um, I think players respect. There's some really good ones, but he treated players with respect and took a lot of pride in what he did, and um, it mattered to him. And not to say it doesn't matter for the other guys, but just um, just he players had a respect for him, and so they said, "You're not gonna blow him up in any way. You're not gonna say, oh, of course I knew I was out.' You're not. You just you're gonna." Happened fast. I haven't seen a replay. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, 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 you know, you guys can ask me tomorrow. I don't. I'll have an answer for you then. So um, I go up, get in the clubhouse. So I remember, like, I think I went in the training room really quick, and I come walking out, and the media was in the clubhouse, and there was just a sea of humanity in front of my locker. I remember, I walked up. I'm like, "What do you guys want to talk about?" You know, <laughs> break the ice. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and it was just like peppering questions like, oh, can you believe this? And I said, I you know, I was doing the whole, hey, he pitched a great game tonight. I haven't seen a replay. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I was out. I don't know if I was safe. It's, you know, fast. It's fast on the field. Now, I wasn't fast, but it was just, 
you know, just things happen quickly. And then one one reporter goes, um, well, then why did you put your hands on top of your head like you were in disbelief? And I was like, I didn't even know I did that. I, I'm thinking, I was like, I didn't know I did that. Um, I said, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I said, I think maybe just the, what was at stake? Just kind of a disbelief that it happened. I don't know. So, um, so the next day was a day game. When I came out of the dugout to go run down the line before the game, like, <laughs> I was literally like one step out of the dugout, like coming up off the stairs. And there was like 30 people like, F you, Donald. <laughs> it, didn't bother, like, it didn't bother me one bit. Like it, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even give it a second thought. So when I was running down the line, getting loose, they brought the pitcher, Armando Galarraga, and to his credit, he handled it great. He's standing at home plate and they're like, we have, since you were such a class act last night, we, we have something uh, Chevrolet would like to present you with with a, you know, a gift. And then the right field corner gate swings open and this cherry red Corvette comes pulling out and they drive it on the field and they drive it to home plate. And I was like walking back towards the foul line after like running a sprint. And a couple guys were stretching. I said, what do I get? Yeah. Like kind of kid around. I'm like, what do I, I, was, I broke that thing up. What do I get? You know, um, out of respect to Jim Joyce, you know, like, like a Fox News morning show, all these morning shows that are, you know, nationally um, broadcasted, you know, they want to talk about it because it was, you know, a big deal for just a short amount of time. I didn't do any of it. Just out of respect to him. Not that I was trying to make it go away, but it's like, just there's no need to keep reliving it. And I'd come across Jim quite a few times after that. And uh, shoot, this was like, Maybe a year later, I think it was like at Yankee Stadium or a couple months later it was at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> there was a bang bang play at first and he was the first base guy. I was say no, I was out and he goes, Stop doing that. Like kidding around, he's like, Stop doing that stuff. He's like, give me a heart attack over here. You know, I was just a part of it. Those two guys were the main characters and um you know, that was real authentic emotion and reaction from Jim. I think that it says a lot about um, who he is, that he's willing to stand up and answer those tough questions. 26 up, 26 down. Here comes number 27. It's Jason Donald and a crowd of better than 17,000 to its feet. The guy we've been waiting for all night. Two for Donald tonight, the 0 1. One ball and one strike on Jason Donald. Cabrera will cut it off. Galarraga covers. He's out. 